everywhere. So technology has changed the way we live. Every day, we are touched by technology in every activity that we do. Tech revolution has actually helped us uh, live a better lifestyle, maybe have more free time, maybe be more, be more productive and be more efficient. We now fantasize about colonizing Mars, injecting nanobots into our bloodstreams. In uh, virtual reality uh, movies and uh, teaching kids 3D printing. So, we are truly at the age of something which is completely disruptive and going to change the entire world. We believe the technology revolution has already happened or has arrived or has it. Um, so, what I believe is if we look around closely, there are so many things left untouched, so many industries and sectors untouched by technological advancements. Uh, take for example how your maid works for you. Take for example the street vendors out on the road. Take for example the way parking happens in your city. So technology has certainly not touched these industries. Uh, they are still functioning the way they always did for centuries and centuries. So um, how, what, what makes these industries so peculiar? What makes them uh, you know sort of untapped by technology? I call them unorganized industries uh, or say fragmented industries. There's something about these industries which makes them um, seem very tedious, seem very difficult for entrepreneurs to approach. Now there's no dearth of entrepreneurship in India, at least I believe being in the startup ecosystem there are too many entrepreneurs out there trying to solve real problems. But most of them chase the glamorous sectors. So an entrepreneur by definition is a problem solver, but which problem do you pick to solve? Which sectors do you go and start applying your problem solving to? So these unorganized industries are the ones uh, where usually government are somewhat involved, it's slightly regulated, there are illusionary entry barriers uh, which founders think are too hard for them to cross um, and they do seem unglamorous, they seem tedious, they seem boring. Um, and they are not usually in the spotlight of media also, so there's some fault over there. But then things are changing a little bit, uh, they are starting to move, there are some startups who are daring to venture into these unorganized markets and trying to change them. I will share a story about one such startup. So one fine day, my friend and co-founder Chirag Jain called me up and he said, uh, Rasik, what's up? I said, nothing, my final exams are going for my MBA uh, last term. And she said, okay, what are your plans after MBA? Now you see, Chirag, he was already working for automotive uh, startup in Bangalore for almost two years. And he had seen the automotive space quite close and he understood that parking is a problem. And for uh, some time in 2014, he was uh, absolutely taken by this idea. The startup worm had bitten him and he was like, okay, I need to take some action. Enough is enough. I need to do something. So sitting in a Starbucks in Mumbai, he buys a domain called getmyparking.com and he feels accomplished. Yes, I bought a domain. Now I will do a startup. But for next one year, he still goes back to his job and continues doing his work. But over that one year, he had brainstormed a lot, researched a lot and thought about how do we change the parking industry in India? Because Indian industry is quite different from what is there in the developed countries. And once he thought that, okay, I have something which can work, then he called me up one day and that was the call. And he was saying, okay, Rasik, what are you doing after exams? Um, I think I'm going to be hitchhiking and then I will join PepsiCo. Now, I had a job offer from PepsiCo and uh, I had won an international competition, got a job offer offered by Indra Nui herself. And uh, he says, okay, but... Exactly what are you doing for three months? Hitchhiking, adventure. Let's do another kind of adventure. I said, what? Let's have an adventure in parking lots. I said, okay. Uh, quite a pitch. Then he had a Steve Jobs moment and he said, why do you want to join Pepsi? I want, and I replied, I want to earn for two years, save money. I always wanted to start up, uh, but I want to earn and save money, have some corporate exposure, etc, etc, all that jazz, okay? And that's when Chirak said, but I did all that. I've been working for two years and I've done all that. I've saved money. I've had corporate exposure. And why do you want to do that if I'm your co-founder? Let's do this. And do you really want to sell sugar water for the rest of your life? No, only for two years. 
no, let's do it now. And I said, okay, let's do an experiment. Three months, we started spending hours and hours on parking lots. Me and Chira used to stand at parking lots in Delhi and Noida and issue tickets ourselves, understanding how this entire ecosystem works, how this economy works. And that's when we really got those insights. We can't copy and paste the Western models to change an unorganized industry like parking in India. We need something truly innovative and something which will help people over here. Because in India, you don't have parking meters. New York had parking meters since 1920s, believe it or not. We don't yet have parking meters. There's a person standing over there because we have really cheap labor costs. That's why we, instead of having meters, we have people standing there. And they run behind cars and issue a ticket and take money, right? That's how parking works in India. Now, there is no digitization at the ground level. If everything is manual, there is no data. If there is no data, how do you know how to solve the problem? Because the first, uh, the first use case for any technology to come and disrupt an industry is that you should have data available. So the first step to digitizing any unorganized industry is uh, enable them for data to come in and go out. That's how we started. Now, you can't put computers at parking lots. There's a guy standing there running behind cars, right? You can't put a computer over there. What do you do? Now, we were inspired by other giants like Uber, Ola, and uh, many other uh, inspiring startups. We just put a mobile phone in the hand of the parking attendants. Um, it's quite easy, actually, because mobile phones are very user-friendly. Every parking attendant has one. He knows how to operate a mobile phone. You don't have to teach him like you have to about how to use a computer. So we put a phone in his hand and we told him, issue every ticket to the mobile phone. There's a small printer which is attached to his pocket, wirelessly connected to his mobile phone, and now every vehicle coming in and going out, he issues a ticket through the mobile phone. He punches in the last four digits of the vehicle on the mobile phone. And the ticket comes out, it tears out and gives the ticket. Simple thing, right? We just replace the ticketing, nothing innovative. But that's what? These unorganized industries are completely untouched by technological revolution, right? That's why even if you do something as basic as just replacing ticketing, you still have done a lot. Because the moment the ticketing is replaced, your number of vehicles coming in and going out are, uh, uh, the data is coming to you. You know how many vehicles are coming in, how many vehicles are going out, what's the revenue, what the analytics is, what is the turnaround time, how much is the utilization capacity of the parking lot, how much is the resource uh, utilization, what are my expenses, and is everything really breaking even for me? So you can suddenly start doing all the wonderful infographics, insights, data analytics, just by replacing ticketing at parking. And that was a wow moment for us. Now, putting a mobile phone in the hand of an operator is easy. But changing the entire industry is tough. You can do it in one place, two places. Over the last one year, we have digitized over 100 locations in Delhi. There are 210 plus systems mobile systems out on daily streets issuing cumulatively 30,000 parking tickets every day. So we are touching 30,000 cars every day using those systems. Now, how do you go from just one idea, from one prototype to scaling to that level? And we really believe there's a lot yet to be done by us. But how do you still take that first step of scale? Uh, you need to have process in, processes in place. So we. So it, we don't call ourselves just a product company, a technological company. We believe we are a solution company. There is a problem and we solve it. So it takes technology and operations and a sort of, you know, human instinct uh, which is involved to solve that problem. We need to go out on the field every day. I have my field team going and talking to these parking attendants daily, teaching them, changing the way they operate and digitizing them. Now once, that we, now, once that we have done this digitization at the parking supply, it works wonder for the consumer. How many of you here drive or can drive? Can we have a show of hands? Okay, quite a few. Great. Uh, so India has only 18 vehicles for 1,000 1, people of our population. US has 860 vehicles. Now I'm no advocate of buying more cars. In fact, I myself drive by public transport as often as possible. But you can't deny, I can't deny that buying a car is one of the biggest aspirations of any uh, person. If you're earning good, car becomes your status symbol and people end up buying vehicles, right? 
So you can't stop people from buying cars. In fact, automobile industry just last month reported their best quarter results. So automobile industry is fairly doing good. There are more cars being bought. In fact, Delhi buys 1600 vehicles every day. 1600 vehicles are registered at Delhi RTO every day. Where are we parking them? Is the parking capacity increasing by that rate? No, it is not. There's a huge gap between supply and demand and someone needs to solve that. And how do you solve that? So that's what Get My Parking does. So this is a very simple device. The parking attendant, usually if you want to digitize any parking, you would imagine a computer over there. But we do all that by a mobile phone. Now there's a person standing there. This, this photo is of a parking attendant called Ravi Kumar. Um, he works in a street side parking in, in, on Saroji Nagar market in South Delhi. And when we went and taught him how to use that system and he started using it, it changed his life. He used to take 15 seconds to write down date, time, entry time of the vehicle and the vehicle number on every ticket and tear it away. Now he just puts the vehicle number. He doesn't have to write date and time on every ticket. Why should he? And in 5 seconds the ticket comes out and he gives it. So he's saving 10 seconds every ticket. And he's issuing 400-500 tickets every day. So he's saving a lot of time at the entry. At the exit, this is where the beauty comes in. At the exit, you would have experienced this, that you haggle with the attendant. That's what you say, right? He will explain you why that is the charge. Because it's hourly basis, right? So he will look at the time you were in the, car, uh, in the parking, your car was parked. And then he will calculate mentally and then ask you for the money. And you can't trust him because he's orally telling you what you should pay him. You don't trust him. Why should you? Again, I don't blame you also. But now, at the exit, he just puts in the vehicle number, checks out the car from the system, there's a printed bill which comes out and he hands it over. Nothing said. He just prints out the bill, gives. You trust him. The moment you see a bill, you trust him. And he doesn't have to do mental calculation. Ki kitna hua, right? He immediately knows. And that saves him a lot of time and much more reliance comes into place. His manager, uh, that's quite an interesting story too. His ma uh, manager, Mr. Arun, he calls me up one night at 11 and says, Bahut achha wa. Very good that we are using your system. Why? I asked. So these are the people we call parking mafia and it's really degrading because they are not mafia. They're just people looking for a form of employment to serve their needs. Okay, they're just trying to earn their bread and butter. So his manager calls me up one day and says, it took me one hour every night to assimilate all the reports from all my attendants because it's all manual, right? Assimilate that, record that, put it somewhere in the register and then go home. I have to go home at 12 or 12.30 every night after parking gets closed. My that one hour of every day is saved because of your system because he has an app on his phone now which tells him real-time reports. So he has real-time reports with infographics and he gets an automated email with Excel sheet uh, on his email ID with all the data. So his life has changed. He has saved one hour every day. The best part is, he calls me up and says, Ki ab jab ghar jata hu. When I go home every night, I get to see my kids before they sleep. Because at 12.30, there is to be asleep every night. So simple technological advancement can change someone's life in a big way. It does. But, these all are unorganized industries, it's not just parking. So we recognized parking as one of the unorganized industries and taught and thought to go and change it using whatever blood, sweat, tear technology we can. We really love parking lots. My team really does. It's heavily polluted. There's so much dust that you can't imagine. Stand at the parking lot for two hours. There's so much dust. Uh, there's layers of uh, smog around you and these people still find joy in small moments. I saw this parking attendance one night playing snake and ladder, uh, sitting on the ground. And these are the people you call mafia, right? So, so these people are just regular people earning almost minimum wage, believe it or not. And we can change their lives. These guys don't have bank accounts, they don't have PF, right? But technology can change their life. And so should every other unorganized industry be changed in the same way. Now the problem is not just uh, at the micro level, at the macro level, this is the graph of how many parking check-ins happen as per the time of the day. You see maximum is around 7, from 7 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Right? So this kind of data, we always say there is rush hour, kitne baje rush hour, what's the rush hour? We don't know. This tells you what the rush hour is. Right? At the city level, if one car slows down to find parking, every car behind it slows down. 
the traffic slows down. There's a research by, research by IBM which says 30% of traffic congestion is because of vehicles roaming around finding parking, searching for parking. So you can increase your urban mobility in cities by 7%. Traffic congestion can be reduced by around 30% at peak times just by having smart parking across city. If everyone knew where I'm going to park right when you're starting to drive, it's going to change the way the city's pollution levels are, the GDP of the city because the more time you waste in searching parking, the less productive time you're having. You're wasting your time, right? The more productive time you have, better the economy would be overall, eventually in the long term. So your economy gets boosted by just a simple technology. And the same thing can be done with anything else because data is important. Look at the way we have urban utilities. There are street lights everywhere and they are mostly on during the days. Why can't we have smart street lights? Why can't we have smart sanitation? Why can't we have smart water distribution system across the city? Government can't do these things themselves. They always tender out things to other companies, right? They are private companies who provide solution to government. And it's time for startups like us to come up and say, hey, technology needs to be adopted. New technology is here to change the way all these utilities work. We can change the way city functions. We can change the way we live truly. And that's when technological revolution would have really arrived. Now we are in love with parking. What are you in love with? Go and get in love with some unorganized industry. It might be tedious. You might feel it's very hard. It might be boring and it, there may not be any glamour involved. There may not be so much of media mention for you as much as it is for grocery delivery startups or e-commerce startups. I'm not against them. But this also needs to be done. And if you put your team's efforts, blood, sweat and tear, you can change the way all these industries work. Because these are the new frontiers. Boring industries, unorganized industries are the next frontier for technological revolution. So you can choose the boring and change them because they are an opportunity for you. So boring is the new sexy, they are the new startup revolution. Thank you.